As the first light of dawn cast its golden hue over the Solomon Islands, Jack Edwards, a young and untested American pilot, gripped the controls of his F-4F Wildcat, his heart pounding with a mix of fear and excitement. High above the dense jungles of Guadalcanal, a fierce battle was about to unfold in the skies, one that would not only determine the fate of the island but also shape the future of the Pacific War. Little did Jack know that his courage and skills would soon be thrust into the center of an aerial showdown where split-second decisions meant the difference between life and death. In these skies, history was waiting to be written and legends were waiting to be born. The sun was just dipping below the horizon when Jack Edwards first laid eyes on Guadalcanal. The Pacific Island, a mottled canvas of dense jungle and muddy terrain, seemed to both welcome and warn the young American pilot as his transport plane descended towards Henderson Field. The air base, a vital foothold in the Solomon Islands, buzzed with activity, a stark contrast to the serene backdrop of the setting sun. Jack, a fresh-faced lieutenant barely out of flight school, felt a mix of anticipation and anxiety churning in his stomach. This was his first deployment, and the reality of war was suddenly tangible, far from the simulated dogfights and training exercises he had aced back home. As the plane touched down, the roar of aircraft engines and the distant thud of artillery filled the air. Stepping out onto the tarmac, Jack was hit by a wave of humid heat. He was quickly ushered along with the other arrivals, a group of young pilots who shared his mix of eagerness and apprehension. They were greeted by squadron leader Captain James Mitchell, a seasoned pilot whose calm demeanor and confident stride spoke of experience. Welcome to Guadalcanal, gentlemen, Captain Mitchell addressed them, his voice competing with the din of the base. You're here because you're the best the Navy has to offer. I expect you to live up to that reputation. The pilots were then given a brief tour of the base. Henderson Field was a flurry of activity. Ground crews rushed to maintain and refuel planes. Medics hustled between tents attending to the wounded, and in the distance, infantry units drilled in preparation for their next engagement. The base, a critical asset in the campaign, was a lifeline for American forces in the Pacific. Jack's eyes were drawn to the array of fighter planes lined up on the runway, the formidable Grumman F-4F Wildcats, the primary aircraft he'd be flying. These planes were the shield against the Japanese Zero fighters, renowned for their agility and the skill of their pilots. The thought of going up against such adversaries sent a thrill through Jack. That evening, Jack and the other new pilots were briefed on the current situation. The Japanese forces were well entrenched and fiercely defending the island. Control of the skies was crucial, and the air battles were intense and unforgiving. The importance of their mission was clear, maintain air superiority to support ground and naval operations. Later, as Jack lay in his bunk in the cramped quarters he shared with three other pilots, he couldn't help but feel a sense of destiny. He thought about his family back home, his younger brother who looked up to him, and his parents who harbored both pride and worry for their eldest son. Jack knew the coming days would test him like never before. In the darkness, he thought about the skies over Guadalcanal. Tomorrow, he would be up there, part of the relentless struggle for control of the island. As he drifted off to sleep, the distant sound of anti-aircraft guns served as a stark reminder of the reality that awaited him. Jack Edwards, the boy who had dreamed of flying, was now a pilot in the fiercest theater of World War II. The dawn would bring his first true test. The first light of dawn barely illuminated the skies over Guadalcanal when Jack Edwards, already clad in his flight suit, headed towards the airstrip. The air was thick with anticipation and the faint smell of aviation fuel. Today, he would face the enemy for the first time. As he approached his assigned wildcat, a ground crewman handed him a leather helmet and goggles. She's all fueled and ready, Lieutenant, 
the crewman said, patting the aircraft's side with a reverence that spoke of the bond between the machines and the men who cared for them. Jack climbed into the cockpit, feeling the familiar rush of adrenaline. He ran through the pre-flight checks with practice precision, his hands steady despite the nerves that fluttered in his stomach. The radio crackled to life and Captain Mitchell's voice came through, calm and authoritative. Squadron, prepare for takeoff. Our reconnaissance spotted a group of Zero fighters heading this way. Let's show them what we're made of. The Wildcats roared to life, and one by one, they sped down the runway and took to the skies. Jack felt the familiar thrill as his plane lifted off the ground, the landscape below shrinking rapidly. The squadron formed up, heading towards the anticipated point of engagement. As they neared the rendezvous point, Jack scanned the skies, his eyes squinting against the glare of the rising sun. Then he saw them a formation of zero fighters, sleek and menacing, approaching fast. His heart pounded in his chest, a mix of fear and excitement. The air battle erupted into chaos. The roar of engines and the staccato of machine gun fire filled the air. Jack followed Captain Mitchell's wildcat, watching his lead and learning quickly. The zeros were agile, darting through the skies with a grace that was almost beautiful. Jack made his first pass at an enemy fighter squeezing the trigger. His shots missed, the Zero slipping away with infuriating ease. The dogfight was a dizzying dance of death. Jack's training kicked in, his movements becoming more fluid, his aim more precise. He managed to get on the tail of a Zero, tracking it through a series of maneuvers. He fired again, and this time his shots found their mark. The Zero faltered, trailing smoke before spiraling downwards towards the ocean. A surge of triumph rushed through Jack, quickly replaced by the stark reminder that this was a fight for survival. A Zero swooped in behind him, its guns blazing. Jack jinked and turned, barely evading the stream of bullets. He could almost feel the enemy pilot's determination to bring him down. The battle seemed to last forever. But finally, the remaining zeros broke off, disappearing into the horizon. Jack's squadron regrouped, heading back to Henderson Field. They had won this encounter, but the cost was evident in the empty spaces in their formation. Not all of their comrades were returning. Back on the ground, Jack climbed out of his cockpit, his legs shaky with the come-down of adrenaline. Captain Mitchell clapped him on the shoulder. Good job, Edwards. You're a natural. But Jack's thoughts were somber. He had tasted his first victory, but the reality of war's deadly stakes had also sunk in. As he walked back to his quarters, the image of the downed Zero haunted him. Today, he had proven himself as a fighter pilot, but this was just the beginning of a long, grueling campaign on the skies of Guadalcanal. In the following days, Jack Edwards began to acclimate to the rhythm of life on Guadalcanal. The days were a blend of intense activity and anxious waiting. When not engaged in combat, the pilots spent their time in maintenance checks, strategy briefings, and restless relaxation. The camaraderie among the squadron grew stronger with each passing day. The pilots, drawn from various backgrounds, shared a bond forged in the fires of shared danger. Jack found himself forming a close friendship with his tent mate, Lieutenant Daniel Danny Gomez, a jovial pilot with an infectious laugh and a knack for lifting spirits. During the long evenings, the men would gather around makeshift tables outside their tents, sharing stories and listening to crackling radio broadcasts. These moments were a welcome respite from the tension of combat. Jack learned about the lives his fellow pilots left behind. Families, dreams, and aspirations paused by the war. One afternoon, while inspecting his aircraft, Jack was approached by Michael Johnson, the experienced pilot he had met on his first day. Michael, with his calm demeanor and insightful observations, had quickly become a mentor figure to Jack. Edwards, care for a walk? Michael asked, 
his eyes hinting at a need for a serious conversation. They strolled towards the edge of the airfield, away from the bustle of the camp. Jack, you've got natural talent, Michael began, his voice earnest. But talent alone doesn't guarantee survival out here. You've got to know when to engage and when to pull back. It's not just about bravery, it's about smart flying. Jack listened intently as Michael shared lessons from his own experiences, the triumphs and the close calls. He spoke of the unpredictability of air combat and the importance of always being mentally prepared. Their talk was interrupted by the sudden roar of engines. The squadron was being scrambled. As they hurried back, Michael placed a firm hand on Jack's shoulder. Remember, stay sharp and stay alive. We need every good pilot we can get. That evening, Jack lay in his bunk reflecting on Michael's words. The thrill of his first victory was now tempered by a deeper understanding of the stakes. He thought about his family, picturing their faces, and the realization that he was fighting not just for his country, but for the chance to return to them one day. The night was punctuated by distant artillery fire, a stark reminder that the front lines were never far away. In those quiet moments, Jack found himself grappling with the complexities of war, the fear, the responsibility, and the fleeting nature of life. As sleep finally claimed him, Jack felt a change within himself. He was no longer just a pilot excited by the adventure of flying. He was a soldier in a brutal campaign, with a role to play and lives depending on his actions. The war was reshaping him, just as it was reshaping the world. The days melded into weeks and the Guadalcanal campaign intensified. For Jack and his squadron, the brief moments of peace were punctuated by the relentless demands of war. The airfield, once a symbol of hope amidst chaos, now bore the scars of constant bombardment and relentless struggle. One morning, as the squadron gathered for a briefing, the mood was somber. Intelligence reports indicated a significant push by Japanese ground forces. The enemy was determined to reclaim Henderson Field. For the pilots, this meant providing crucial air support to the infantry, a responsibility that weighed heavily on them. As they took to the skies, the reality of the broader war on Guadalcanal became apparent. Below, the dense jungle hid the brutal ground combat, a stark contrast to the clear, open expanse of the sky where Jack felt both vulnerable and free. Their mission was to disrupt enemy troop movements and provide cover for the American ground forces. Jack, now more experienced, maneuvered his wildcat with a mix of caution and confidence. The aerial skirmishes were fierce, but the pilots were determined to keep the enemy at bay. Amidst the chaos, Jack couldn't help but admire the resilience of the infantrymen below. Their determination mirrored that of the pilots. Different battlefields, same war. This shared struggle fostered a deep sense of unity among all the forces on the island. The day's battle was long and arduous, but the squadron managed to inflict significant damage on the enemy while keeping their own losses to a minimum. As they returned to base, the sight of smoke rising from different parts of the island was a grim reminder of the war's unrelenting nature. That evening, news of their success was tempered by reports of heavy losses among the ground troops. The victory was bittersweet, a sentiment that resonated deeply within the squadron. Jack and Danny sat quietly outside their tent, listening to the distant sounds of the jungle, each lost in their thoughts. The conversation turned to the future, what life would be like after the war. Danny spoke of his desire to return to his family's farm in Texas, while Jack shared his simple wish to enjoy a peaceful sky, free from the threat of enemy planes. Their reverie was broken by the arrival of Michael, his face etched with fatigue. Good flying today, boys. But remember, this is a marathon, not a sprint. We need to be ready for what tomorrow brings. The next day brought news of an impending large-scale air battle. Japanese reinforcements were arriving, 
and a decisive aerial engagement was inevitable. The squadron prepared for what was to be one of their toughest challenges yet. That night, under a canopy of stars, Jack lay awake, pondering Michael's words. The war was a constant cycle of tension and release, and each day demanded everything they had. As he finally drifted to sleep, Jack clung to the hope that, against all odds, they would prevail. The tide of war was relentless, but so were they. The dawn broke with an uneasy silence over Guadalcanal. The air was thick with anticipation. Today, Jack and his squadron faced the most significant challenge yet, a major air battle against a formidable force of Japanese reinforcements. The pilots gathered for an early briefing, their faces a mix of determination and apprehension. Captain Mitchell outlined the strategy. Intelligence reports suggest a large formation of enemy bombers escorted by Zero fighters. Our job is to intercept and prevent them from reaching Henderson Field. Remember, teamwork is key. Watch each other's backs out there. As they suited up, Jack felt a familiar surge of adrenaline. He thought about the previous day's conversation with Danny and Michael. Today's battle wasn't just about survival. It was about protecting their comrades on the ground and the strategic position they all fought so hard to maintain. The wildcats roared into the morning sky, ascending into the vast blue canvas above. The pilots scanned the horizon, searching for signs of the enemy. Then, as they neared the anticipated interception point, the enemy planes came into view. A large formation of bombers, their silhouettes ominous against the sky, escorted by agile Zero fighters. The air battle erupted with a ferocity that Jack had never experienced. The skies were filled with a chaotic ballet of aircraft, twisting and turning in deadly combat. Jack dove into the fray, his focus narrowing to the enemy fighters in his sights. The Zeros were relentless, their skilled pilots pushing the Americans to their limits. Jack found himself in a dogfight with a particularly aggressive Zero. They danced through the sky, each trying to gain the upper hand. Jack's heart pounded as he maneuvered his wildcat, looking for an opening. Finally, he saw his chance and took it, firing a burst that sent the Zero spiraling downwards. Despite their valiant efforts, the intensity of the battle took its toll on the American squadron. One by one, some of their planes were hit, trailing smoke as they fell from the sky. Jack felt a pang of loss with each wildcat that went down, knowing it could have been him, knowing it could still be him. In the midst of the chaos, Jack heard Captain Mitchell's voice over the radio, rallying the pilots. Stay focused! Protect the bombers! Inspired by their leader's call, the squadron regrouped, fending off the Zeros with renewed vigor. After what felt like hours, the tide of the battle began to turn. The American fighters, through sheer determination and skill, managed to down a significant number of enemy aircraft and disrupt the bomber's formation. The remaining Japanese planes retreated, leaving the skies over Guadalcanal to the Americans. As Jack and the others returned to Henderson Field, the relief was palpable. They had won but the victory was not without cost. The ground crew rushed to attend to the planes and pilots, the reality of their losses sinking in. That evening, the squadron gathered to honor their fallen comrades. The mood was somber, each pilot reflecting on the fragility of life and the harshness of war. Jack stood with Danny and Michael, their bond strengthened in the face of shared loss. We did well today. Michael said quietly. But this is just the beginning. We must be ready for what comes next. As Jack lay in his bunk that night, the images of the day's battle replayed in his mind. They had emerged victorious, but at a significant cost. The reality of war was no longer an abstract concept. It was real, painful, and unforgiving. Jack understood now more than ever the importance of their mission and the need to stay strong. The war in the skies of Guadalcanal was far from over. 
In the aftermath of the first major battle, the atmosphere at Henderson Field was a tapestry of triumph and tragedy. The victory in the skies had come at a steep price, and the reality of this cost settled heavily on Jack and his fellow pilots. The days that followed were a time for recovery and reflection. The squadron, diminished but undeterred, attended to the repairs of their aircraft and the healing of their spirits. Jack found solace in the routine maintenance of his wildcat, the physical work a welcome distraction from the haunting memories of the aerial combat. In the evenings, the pilots gathered, their conversations more subdued than before. They shared stories of the friends they had lost, each tale a testament to bravery and sacrifice. Jack listened, absorbing the narratives that wove the tapestry of their shared experience. One such evening, as a tropical storm grumbled in the distance, Michael approached Jack with an invitation to walk. They strolled down the damp tarmac, their steps echoing slightly in the quiet after the rain. Jack, Michael began, his voice steady, I've seen that look in your eyes. It's the weight of survival, the burden of having made it through when others did not. It's a heavy load, but you can't let it break you. Jack nodded silently, the truth in Michael's words resonating deeply within him. He had felt the creeping tendrils of guilt, the unspoken question of why he had survived when others as brave and skilled had not. You carry their memory, not their ghosts, Michael continued, his gaze fixed on the darkening horizon. Each time you fly, you honor their sacrifice. Remember, we're fighting for a cause greater than any one of us. For every pilot we lose, a dozen more lives are saved by our actions. Their conversation shifted to the days ahead. Intelligence suggested more enemy attacks were imminent. The squadron needed to be prepared, both mentally and physically, for the challenges to come. Returning to the barracks, Jack lay awake, the sound of rain a steady rhythm on the canvas roof. Michael's words echoed in his mind, a guiding beacon through the fog of his thoughts. He realized that his resolve had only been strengthened by the trials he had faced. The losses had instilled in him a deeper sense of purpose. The following day saw Jack taking on a more active role in the squadron. He shared his experiences with newer pilots, offering guidance and support. In these interactions, he found a new sense of leadership, an unexpected but welcome development in his journey as a pilot. As the island braced for the next wave of combat, Jack felt a renewed sense of commitment. He was no longer just fighting for survival. He was fighting for the memory of those who had fallen, for the future they had all hoped to see. The war had changed him, honing his skills as a pilot and reshaping his perspective on life and duty. The resolve within the squadron was palpable. They were ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead, united by their shared experiences and the unspoken bond of those who fly into battle together. The skies over Guadalcanal would once again bear witness to their courage, and Jack Edwards would be among those leading the charge. The tension at Henderson Field was palpable as dawn broke on what was anticipated to be the day of a decisive battle. Intelligence reports indicated a massive offensive by the Japanese, aiming to finally overwhelm the American defenses and recapture the airfield. For Jack and his squadron, this meant a day of intense aerial combat, defending the skies above Guadalcanal. As the pilots gathered for the morning briefing, Captain Mitchell underscored the gravity of the situation. Today, we defend Henderson Field with everything we've got. Remember, the key to victory is in our unity and our resolve. We fight not just for ourselves, but for every soldier on this island. Jack felt a mix of nerves and determination as he donned his flight gear. The stakes were higher than ever. He thought of the journey that had brought him here, the battles fought, and the friends lost. Today, he would honor their memory with his actions. The squadron launched into a sky tinged with the first light of dawn. The pilots flew in tight formation, 
scanning the horizon for signs of the enemy. It wasn't long before the Japanese aircraft appeared, a formidable swarm of bombers and Zero fighters, their numbers greater than any they had encountered before. The battle commenced with an intensity that surpassed all previous encounters. The skies above Guadalcanal roared with the sound of engines and gunfire. Jack dove into the fray, his focus singular, protect the bombers, defend the island. The Zeros were relentless, their pilots skilled and determined. But Jack and his squadron fought back with equal ferocity. Jack found himself locked in a dogfight with a particularly adept Zero pilot. The two aircraft danced a deadly ballet, each seeking the advantage. With a combination of skill and a bit of luck, Jack managed to get a clear shot, downing the Zero with a burst of gunfire. Despite their valiant efforts, the sheer number of enemy fighters overwhelmed the American pilots. Jack watched in horror as several of his squadron's wildcats were hit, their pilots parachuting into the unforgiving jungle below. It was then that Jack heard the call from Captain Mitchell. Edwards, take lead. We need to regroup and push them back. Stepping into the role, Jack rallied the remaining pilots. Follow me. Let's cut through their lines. His voice was steady, his resolve clear. Together, they launched a counterattack, breaking through the enemy formation and targeting the bombers. In a display of extraordinary bravery and skill, the squadron managed to inflict severe damage on the enemy bombers, disrupting their formation and thwarting their advance. The Japanese, their offensive broken, began to retreat. As the last of the enemy planes disappeared over the horizon, the pilots of Jack's squadron let out a collective sigh of relief. They had done it. They had held the line against overwhelming odds. Returning to Henderson Field, the pilots were greeted as heroes. The ground crews rushed to attend to the battered planes and weary men. Jack stepped out of his cockpit, his heart heavy for those they had lost but proud of what they had achieved. That evening, as the sun set over Guadalcanal, the squadron gathered. They shared a quiet moment of reflection for their fallen comrades and for their hard-fought victory. Jack looked around at the faces of his fellow pilots, each marked by the trials of battle but resolute in their duty. The decisive battle of that day would be remembered as a turning point in the Guadalcanal campaign. For Jack, it was a testament to the courage and sacrifice of those who fought in the skies. The war was far from over, but they had proven their mettle in one of the most critical battles of the Pacific Theater. In the days following the decisive battle, a sense of solemn pride settled over Henderson Field. The victory had been pivotal in maintaining control of Guadalcanal, a turning point in the campaign that marked the beginning of the end for Japanese efforts to retake the island. For Jack and his squadron, the triumph was bittersweet, tempered by the loss of friends and the harsh realities of war. The aftermath of the battle brought a brief respite from combat. The squadron used this time to repair and regroup, to heal both physically and emotionally. Jack, who had emerged as a skilled and respected pilot, took on a more prominent role in the squadron, sharing his experience with newer recruits and helping to bolster the morale of his fellow pilots. As the days passed, news of their victory spread, and the squadron received commendations for their bravery and skill. Jack was cited for his leadership and exceptional flying during the battle. Although he accepted these honors, he did so with humility, always mindful of the sacrifices made by his comrades. One quiet evening, as Jack sat looking out over the airfield, Captain Mitchell joined him. Edwards, he began, your flying out there was nothing short of remarkable. You've shown courage and a level of skill that saved lives and turned the tide of this battle. You should be proud. Jack nodded, feeling a mix of pride and responsibility. Thank you, sir. I just did what I had to do. We all did. Mitchell looked out towards the runway, where mechanics were busy repairing a damaged wildcat. This war's changed us all, Jack. 
but it's men like you who make the difference. You've got a bright future ahead. As the campaign on Guadalcanal wound down, with the American forces gaining the upper hand, Jack found himself reflecting on his journey. The young pilot who had arrived on the island, eager and untested, had been forged in the crucible of war into a seasoned and capable fighter. The day came when orders arrived for Jack's squadron to rotate off the island. As he packed his gear, he felt a profound connection to Guadalcanal, a place that had been both a battlefield and a crucible for his growth. He said his goodbyes to the island and the men he had fought alongside, knowing that their shared experiences would bind them forever. As the transport plane lifted off, Jack looked down at Henderson Field one last time, its runways and tents etched into his memory. The battles fought there, the lives lost and the courage shown, would stay with him always. Years later, Jack Edwards stood before a group of young pilots, sharing stories of his time in the Pacific during World War II. His hair had grayed, but his eyes still held the same intensity that had served him well in the skies over Guadalcanal. He spoke of the battles, the camaraderie, and the lessons learned. But most of all, he spoke of the importance of bravery, teamwork, and perseverance. War is a harsh teacher, he said, but the lessons it teaches about courage, sacrifice, and the value of human life, those lessons are invaluable. As he concluded his talk, Jack's thoughts drifted back to Guadalcanal to the young men who had fought and died there. They were the true heroes, he thought, the ones who had paid the ultimate price for freedom. Jack's legacy was not just in the battles he had won, but in the wisdom he passed on to future generations. The story of Guadalcanal and of all those who fought there would live on, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity.